Hello fellow Rachmaninoff junkies. I decided to make a video to show you some techniques you can use to help you in your practicing and your learning of the third concerto by Rachmaninoff. I'm going to also show you a photo of each page of this excerpt of the Rachmaninoff concerto with my fingering markings hopefully clear enough for you to see. I think they are. Um, I do have large hands, so you may find the fingering helpful if you have large hands. You might even find the fingering helpful if you have small hands. If you have small hands and actually like the fingering, uh, please leave a comment. Um, that would really help us out. I, any feedback you guys have about these techniques, about my fingering, uh, please fire it at me, okay? Anything constructive is all fair game. Um, so without further ado, uh, let me show you what I do in my slow practice here. So um, let's start with this passage here. Okay, now you can see I'm struggling a little bit to play it. So th this is a great candidate for slow practice. Um, you know, it's not quite as clear as I'd like. The balance of the different parts isn't quite what I'd like. Well, so what do we do? Well, the first thing is play through this slowly. Now, this is assuming, again, this is assuming that you know where all your fingerings are. You at least have an idea uh, of solidified your, you, of where you're gonna put your fingers at any given time. Now I have most anywhere when I had any doubts about what finger would be on the note, I've written it in. Uh, so I, that I would recommend to you guys too as well. You can take my uh, photo of my score. You can copy down every one of my finger markings if you want to, and that gives you that much more head. If you have large hands, it'll it'll probably work. So here what I want to do is I want to bring down the 16th notes, I want to bring up the longer value notes, and I want to give the longer values more emphasis. So we get that melody coming out. Now how am I doing that? More arm weight is going to my fifth finger, okay? The finger, the hand rotates on an axis here that goes really sort of through your third, third finger here. And I want to feel like this is sort of centered as much as possible at all times and keeping my fingers as close as possible to the nose where they're going to go. Now, what I'm doing is I'm feeling this sensation of swinging my fifth finger out. That's how the fifth finger plays. That's how you bring out those accents. So I have to have a little twisting motion and I just have to learn that into my procedural muscle memory uh, of playing this piece. It's getting there. I still need to slow this down. I would recommend this tempo. Okay, I don't want to smash the notes like that. I'm just, just demonstrating the slowness of the tempo. So let's get it musical. Okay, because there's a diminuendo, so it's getting a little quieter as you go lower, which is difficult to do. So. I need to do this slow practice. You need to do the slow practice. Um, repetition, it, it, yes, it is hard work, but you're doing that and you're doing it as musical the phrasing as you can, that will help. Now here's another thing you can do. You can do this changing up the phrasing. You can, I know it's written legato in, in these, uh, with the melody notes. Play it detached. Sorry. musical, let's do the dynamics, but let's do it detached. Okay, so there you notice I just made the 16th detached, all right? That's, that's maybe a better way of doing it. Um, playing it as many different ways as possible is something that helps keep it fresh, helps your brain learn these patterns better because you keep changing it up. It's like uh, you're, if you're, you know, exercising your bicep, you're doing curls. Let's not do just these curls, let's do you know, curls on a preacher bench, let's do concentration curls. We're going to do all different angles of that muscle to get that muscle to respond to the training. Well, you need to do the same thing with piano because you're just training little small muscles, these muscles right here. Um, okay, so let's get, let's get to the nitty gritty of this seesaw motion part that uh, I demonstrated at the beginning of the video. Um, 
Okay, there's the first one. What we have, we have this, this series of the trilling motives again. Okay, I'm, I'm just sl suddenly slowing it down just to show you. You're going to need to practice this slowly. Now, this is where you're really going to want to look at my fingering. Um, I think it's actually probably going to work for most hands. I give alternate fingerings and stuff. Refer to my fingering, see if you like it. Let me know in the comments, please, because I want to know if this is helpful. Um, okay, and so we're, let's begin this more of a mezzo forte and then come down with the sound. I think that's what he wants. Let's get the wrist motion. So you never want your wrist to be locked. See how my wrists are making little circles? Okay, the wrist motions. Suppleness of the hand was number one. It, with Chopin, uh, his technique, he emphasized the suppleness of the hand, of the wrist in particular. So we don't want to get tension. We don't want tension. We want relaxation when you're playing this, believe it or not. You, you can achieve relaxation with this. Okay. This is, this is one where you have a wider spread of notes, so it makes it harder. It just gets more difficult. So do this slowly. Okay, so that was sort of an unmusical phrasing. It was all two-note slurs. We can do this detached as well. Keeping the center of your weight, keep this center of your hand as close to the center of where the spread of the notes is at all times. That's what we're trying to do. So that takes a little bit of calculation, mental ar arithmetic as you're playing this. Where do I want the, my hand to be? Okay, that was the wrong note. I've got to get my third finger right in between these two black notes and then it's got to hit on the target every time. So, so getting to that is particularly tricky and I've got to stay close to the keys because if I get too far away, you, I mean, you can play it this way, but let's try to speed it up and, and you'll see what happens. We don't want to be playing like that. We don't, okay? So it's much too hard, much too hard that way. Let's make it easier by staying close to the key. So I'm going to bring my left hand wrist down. It's alternating motion. It's a rotation. It's like this. Okay? There's a lot of that in all sorts of pieces. Um, you know, you're playing Mozart, you have your left hand. What happens if it's still too difficult to make it through the entire phrase without stopping, um, even at a slow tempo? And this happens early on in the process of learning a piece. We don't want to practice mistakes. We want to make sure that we take a small enough section of the phrase that we can practice without mistakes at our slow tempo. So in this case, rather than doing the whole thing, there's about halfway through. I'll stop there and I'll get that first part and make sure that I get that all the little motions perfect. At that point, then I'll go ahead and do the second half. Notice that I'm not using a lot of pedal. Um, I might use more pedal in some of these spots for performance. But, so while I'm practicing, I want to be able to hear the clarity that I'm getting. How will you find that most musical way? Well, you're going to have to slow everything down. And you're going to have to try the, the best finger, see where the best fingering is for you. So, if you're learning the Rock 3, you're in luck. I've given you my fingering. I think it's pretty good. It works pretty well for me. Um, please take it, do what, you know, use it, share it. Um, if you like this video, please subscribe for more of this type of content. This is really the first time I've done anything like this. Um, I'm happy to sit and have these talks about any, any piece of music. Um, you just let me know what you want, uh, what you're looking for in the comments, and I'll try to make it happen. Peace out.